you're at home, at work, or in your car, Traffic Radio 96.1 keeps you informed with the latest traffic news as it breaks. Traffic Radio 96.1 Lagos, Africa's first authentic traffic radio. News on Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. Moving Lagos forward. Hello and good afternoon. Here is the news at four. First, the highlights. Lagos State Governor inaugurates steering and technical committees for Lagos Cares Initiative. Acting Inspector General of Police orders withdrawal of senior officers attached to EFCC. On the Florentine opposition rejects handing over of leadership to late Idris Debbie's son. And in sports, second round of Nigerian Professional Football League to begin on May 9. Now the details, I am Akan Usen. Part of steps to alleviate the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lagos State Governor Babajide Songulu has inaugurated a 10-member steering committee and four-member technical committee for the Lagos Cares Initiative, supported by the World Bank. Governor Songulu noted that the program is a national intervention program under the National COVID-19 Action and Economic Stimulus Initiative, which is being domesticated in states to combat the impact of COVID-19 on households, living standards, food security, and medium small and micro enterprises in the state. This program is designed to be completely inclusive, to be purposeful, to impact everyone, but most especially women and the youth. I would like to remind the committee members not to lose sight of our team's agenda, which is our own driving economic policy. So whilst we're driving our team's agenda, we we'll look for the three thematic areas for results and we can encompass both together and ensure that the deliverables are adequate and the impact is felt. Earlier, the special advisor to the Governor on Sustainable Development Goals and Investments, Sholakwe Hammond, noted of that the state is implementing 10 distant learning institutes out of 11 across the result areas impacting about 20,000 people, 69 markets and 2,572 MSMEs. Therefore, this reflects our commitment to significantly improve our state's human factor development index and to eventually reduce the barriers to minimum poverty, which is a key point for the jobs of our administration. The steering committee is chaired by the State Commissioner for Economic Planning and Budget, Sam Igubi. Special Advisor on Sustainable Development Goals, Sholakwe Hammond, with the Commissioners for Women Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Wealth Creation, Agriculture, Finance, Executive Secretary of the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund, among others, as members. A correspondent at Diola Kindili reports that the Lagos Cares Initiative will run in the state for 24 months to provide economic support and relief to identified vulnerable persons in the state. And Governor Sonolu has been appointed as the champion of the Human Capital Development Agenda Drive in the Southwest. Meanwhile, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu has launched the Human Capital Development Agenda, a national program aimed at critically addressing human capital issues, which will improve Human Capital Development Index and eliminate poverty in the state. The committee to oversee the implementation of the initiative is chaired by the state deputy governor, Obafemi Hamzat. Governor Sawolu listed the areas of focus to include youth and women empowerment, issues around education, health, job creation, among others. Therefore, this reflects our commitment to significantly improve our state's human factor development index and to eventually reduce the barriers to minimum poverty, which is a key point for the of the Deputy Governor of Bafemi Hamzat, on behalf of other members of the committee, said it will allow the state have structural approach to improving and measuring human capital development goals in the state. <laughs> Staff and management of Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM 
have resolved to embrace conflict management and understanding as key tools towards maintaining cordial relationships and better productivity as a winning team in the new normal. This was part of the recommendations contained in a communique issued at the end of a two-day general retreat organized by the station with the theme Rekindling the Workforce for Effective Performance in a New Normal. The communique also identified synergy and good working relationships among various departments, having the right mindset and positive attitude and encouragement of regular medical surveillance for members of staff as a way to also increase productivity in the new normal. At the end of the two-day retreat, the participants took part in class activities and learned from case studies referred to by the facilitators, which helped the facilitators to drive home their point. Lagos State Independent Electoral Commission, La Siec, has released a timetable for elections in the 20 local governments and 35 local council development areas, LCDAs. The election is scheduled to hold on July 24, as stated by the 1999 Nigerian Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chairman of La Siec, Ayotunde Phillips, who stated this, in the notice of election published today, said the commission would meet with political parties on Friday for the release of election guidelines. Phillips said campaigns by political parties for the election will begin April 30 and end on July 22. And now to the rest of the stories. Acting Inspector General of Police Usman Baba has ordered the withdrawal of senior police officers from the rank of Chief Superintendent of Police and above attached to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC. He reached the decision on the operational requirements of the force. In a letter dated April 15, 2021, addressed to the EFCC chairman and signed by the principal staff officer to the IG, Ido Omohua, the police boss directed that the affected officers should report not later than today. And now to the four news. Opposition politi politicians in Chad have regret rejected the army's appointment of President Idris Debi's son to take over in the wake of his death. Debi, 68 years old, who had been in power for three decades, died after being shot as he battled rebels on the front line. The rebels have also objected to the move, saying Chad is not a monarchy. Muhammad Idris Debi Itno, also known as General Kaka, was in charge of the presidential guard and was to lead the country for 18 months until elections. And away from all that, now sports. The second stanza of the 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League season will start on May 9. The league management company made the announcement today, saying the season will commence with the exception of the Ayimba Rangers' outstanding fixture. Power United lead the NPFL halfway through the season with 36 points after 19 matches with Caterpillars and Aqua United in second and third position. Warri Wolves, Katsina United, FC Flyumba and Adamawa United are in the relegation zone. And that's the news at four. But just before we go, please take responsibility for your health and that of your loved ones. You can listen to Lagos Traffic Radio on our website, www.trafficradio961.ng. And follow us on our various social media platforms on Twitter at Lagos Traffic 961, on Instagram Lagos Traffic, and on Facebook Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. On YouTube, subscribe to our channel, Traffic Radio 961. Also, you can now download our app, Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, from Play Store for more traffic updates. To end the news, your other highlights of the major stories. <laughs> As part of steps to alleviate the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwulu has inaugurated a 10-member steering committee and four-member technical committee for the Lagos Cares Initiative, supported by the World Bank. <laughs> Acting Inspector General of Police Usman Baba has ordered the withdrawal of senior police officers from the rank of Chief Superintendent of Police and above attached to the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. We also told you that opposition politicians in Chad have rejected the army's appointment of President Idris Debi's son to take over in the wake of his death. And in sports, the second stanza of the 2020-2021 Nigeria Professional Football League season will start on May 9. For contact with the newsroom, please send a message to newsroom at trafficradio961.ng. 
And that ends the news broadcast compiled by Adewale Oluwo Poroku. I am Akan Usen. Thanks for listening and please stay safe. Good afternoon. <laughs>
Honey, must you go? Yes, you know I must. Besides, you can always video call me. Yeah, what if your battery runs out? I've got my power bank. Hey, and when your power bank runs out? <laughs> Babe, I've got my laptop. Okay, wait. What if your data runs out? Babe, you know we never run out of data. Never run out of data with Airtel Home Broadband Unlimited Ultra Plans. Enjoy unlimited data with no speed cap plus extra data daily so you never have to worry about running out. Visit www.airtel.com.ng forward slash HBB to get started. Babe, but I just left the house. Yes, honey. It's video calling all the way. <laughs> Airtel, the smart Network. Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM. It is time for Themes Agenda this week. Today on Themes Agenda this week, the focus is on the activities and achievement of the Lagos State Governor, Babajide Songulu, led administration on the activities of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, in line with the Themes Agenda. Happy listening. a new edition of Teams Agenda this week, a special report that focuses on the activities and achievements of the Teams Agenda of Lagos State Governor, the 32nd in its series. Transportation in developed and developing nations cannot function properly without a well-planned infrastructural system as a large fraction of people travel daily either for work, shopping, or social reasons. Hence, Transport infrastructure is a critical ingredient in economic development in which it plays a role as a capital input into production and wealth generation. At inception, the administration of Lagos State Governor Babaji De Sawoli promised to deliver the dividends of democracy through the Six Pillars Teams Agenda, which the letter T stands for Transportation and Traffic Management. In today's special report on Teams Agenda this week, Damilari Fagua of our News and Current Affairs Department examines the activities of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, in line with the team's agenda of Governor Babajide Sawolu. The Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, is established by a bill signed into law on 13th January 2002 to ensure planning, implementing, regulating and franchising public transport infrastructure and operations in the state. The law empowered LAMATA with the responsibility of reforming the transport system in Lagos with the aim of creating a world-class intermodal integrated transport system for the emerging mega city. Prior to the establishment of LAMATA, the public transport system in Lagos was dysfunctional and unregulated. Lagos had a population estimated at over 10 million in the year 2000 and projected, although conservatively, to grow to more than 25 million by 2015. However, transport Transport infrastructure and services were at levels that supported a population of no more than 6 million. As a result, levels of efficiency and productivity in the metropolitan area had been adversely affected by a growing weakness in the physical infrastructure required to support the basic needs of the population in Lagos, which bores every second and considered as the sixth largest city and one of the most rapidly urbanizing metropolitan areas of the world. In carrying out its tasks, the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, LAMATA, developed a strategic transport master plan which detailed transport infrastructure requirements for Lagos till 2032. Realizing the need to build upon the efforts of past administrations in the state, Governor Babajide Sawolu, upon assumption of office in May 2019, came up with a six-point themes agenda in which the first letter T is geared towards traffic management and transportation to advance the integrated intermodal transportation infrastructure, which includes roads, high-speed rail, waterways, bridges and tunnels, stations, walkways, all aimed at solving the chaotic traffic situation in the state of over 20 million people. With this effort, the present administration made over 400 bus rapid transit BLT available, plying different routes, an initiative aimed at encouraging more motorists to use public transportation and thus reducing traffic congestion. Currently, about 800 buses are being managed by Lamata and actively on the road. By the end of this year, 
there is a plan for additional 2,000 buses which will ply different routes in the metropolis to create options and choices for the residents to be moved quickly and more efficiently and hopefully traffic in Lagos will be better. Lamata also completed the 13.6 kilometers Osho the Abuneba PRT corridor, which was inaugurated on August 12, 2020, and inaugurated by Governor Babajide Saolu, who also launched the Kauri card for cashless transport payment system, which in the future will grant access to intermodal transport system. The integrated mass transportation initiative also received a boost with the successful completion of an elevated sea crossing track of the Lagos Blue Line Rail Mass Transit Project a five-kilometer-long continuous beam bridge constructed from Igonu to Marina, which is part of the first phase of the Blue Line Way project, which is from Marina to Kukumaiko. The current traffic situation in the state indicates that 95% of transportation is done by road. Hence, the need to reduce the number of cars on the road and provide alternative options which are rail and waterways transportation that is efficient and safe for Lagosians and those that choose to visit Lagos. In the same vein, the commencement of construction activities on the Lagos Rail Mass Transit Project also received green light with the Blue Line Rail and Red Line Rail set to be completed next year. The Red Line, which is a construction of a 37-kilometer north-south rail road project when fully operational will have the capacity to move more than 1 million passengers daily. The first phase of the project from Oyimbo to Agbadeo train stations will be sited at Oyimbo, Yaba, Mushi, Oshodi, Ikeja, Agege, Iju and Agbadeo. History was made on Thursday, 15th of April 2021 with a groundbreaking ceremony of the Red Line at Ikeja. The governor compensated and issued checks to about 263 property owners affected by the commencement of the construction of the Red Line Rail project. These include landlords, tenants and business owners. The amount paid ranges from 140,000 to 260 million naira according to the value of the property. Governor Sonwoli promised that the Red Rail Line will commence operations by the last quarter of year 2022 and appealed to Lagosians to exercise patience throughout the duration of the project. Our choices for an integrated transportation system is clear and is crystal clear. We will continue to set for every available means of funding for our transportation infrastructure to ensure that the deadlines of our 2020 last quarter and our first quarter 2023 becomes a reality. We are going to be seeing in total about six overpasses. These are not just pedestrian overpasses, these are vehicular overpasses. They are like bridges that we have in front here. And so from Ikeja, we'll be having an overpass. We're we'll having one at Mushi, we're we'll having at Yaba, and we'll be having another one at Uibo. With the support of the federal government, there'll be an overpass at Ilukweju and another one at Jibo to complement the ones that we're doing, and a final one at Faga, so that the safety of our passengers, the safety of rail journey is totally 100%. Nobody or no rail journey will be put at risk because both the vehicle will be moving on top and the rail will be moving underneath. It is obvious that the Lagos State Government will not toy with the safety of Lagos residents along this corridor. To this end, there would be a construction of ancillary infrastructure, which will be including six overpasses and strategic level crossing points along the rail corridor to eliminate interactions between the rail system, vehicle and pedestrian traffic. The overpasses will provide great separated crossings that will enhance safety for the rail system and road users. One unique characteristic of the red line is its integration with the Ikeja bus terminal, which should the Abu bus rapid transit reality lane, the future orange line, which goes from Ikeja to Aboa, and the general aviation terminal one of the Motala Mohammed International Airport through a skywalk. Another unique feature of the red line is that all the stations have elevated concourses with either at grid island or side platforms for easy boarding at alighting for passengers. The red line also integrates with bus terminals at Oyibo, Yaba, Oshodi, Ikeja and Iju, giving modal options to the people in their daily commuting, either for business or leisure. Managing Director of Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata Abimbola Akiajo, noted that the present administration is committed to the Strategic Transport Master Plan, which encompasses a number of projects that are germane to achieving a greater Lagos, seek to increase transport choices for all users and make the transit system integrated, attractive, convenient, affordable and accessible. 
According to R, the rail corridor will be constructed in three phases. The first phase at Badoido, which will be completed in 24 months, will be sharing track with the federal government's legacy by the railway modernization project up to Ebute Meta. It will add its dedicated track from Ebute Meta to Ebu and reduce travel time for about two and a half hours to just 35 minutes. The passenger capacity of the first phase is 500,000 daily. Mrs. Akira just stated that the Red Line Rail project is 80% completed and the Blue Line is 78% completed in terms of physical infrastructure. The signaling system will allow us to do a train at least every 10 minutes. So we will have more trains in the peak hour, obviously, and the peak hours will run from about 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the morning. And then evening peak will be from about 4, 4.30 till about 8, 8 o'clock in the night. Where we, our station will stop, where our own trains will stop, is at Bado. That's our own vision. But Ogun State is speaking to us to see whether we can go beyond. And those are conversations that we're open to and we have been discussing with the Commissioner for Transport in Ogun State to see whether we can go as far as Ijoku. For the Managing Director of Lamata, technology is the future and to continue to move the increasing number of passengers on the road and train, the local state government will be also rolling out the Intelligent Transport System, ITS, which will be visible at every station for coordination and to inform passengers of the next available train. Akia Jo explained that just as the BRT buses can be tracked, same will apply to the train. The agency's vision for the future is to also capture the full trade zone, Lekki area. In addition to Blue Line Rail and Red Line Rail projects, which will move at 120 km per hour, some other rail projects have been advertised and these include the 68 km Green Line, 60 km Purple Line, 34 km Yellow Line and 48 km Orange Line. Akia Jo assured that there will be regular updates on the construction of the rail line as well as more awareness to the general public in order to protect the interests and welfare of Lagosians in line with international best practices. We're responsible for building the infrastructure to support public transportation, and that includes the building of bus terminals, bus depots, the building of the rail lines, for instance, that we've all been talking about, the red and the blue line rail systems that are being built, that's under the purview of LAMATA, and also regulating it. So at this point in time, asking private sector to work with us. So we have private sector who's doing standard routes, BRT routes. Vision for the state is that we will work with private sector and they bring buses, we regulate them, and we put out so many buses on the road. Lagos State has demonstrated its commitment in that direction. Some of the beneficiaries who are tenants and visibly elated said this is the first time the state government will compensate tenants residing in demolished buildings. We thank God and we thank His Excellency, the Governor of Lagos State, for this compensation. I was very happy to collect the check because I didn't think they would give me a check. But I'm very, very thank God for them. In that of the bonus, today, that pay don't come to the government line. We are happy, God don't bless us. Some Lagos residents commend the Songo new administration for this feat. When you think of the railway, it's a welcome development. It's something that will help. What they are doing is infrastructural development, and that's mass transit, which I guess everybody has always been clamoring for. On the basis of that, you will not have so many private cars on the road, and then you will not have so many buses also on the road, because the capacity which the railway will take, buses will not be able to take at one single halt. Trains don't cause traffic to one another. So it's a commended move. I think it's something which is long overdue. The railway project that the Lagos State government wants to do now is very appreciative. If they can implement it early, Except from Agbado down to Ebutemeta, down to Marina. It will be very easier for everybody because 80% of people selling at Idumota, they come from that side. We commend the Gossip government for what they are doing and I pray may God help them to do more than what we expect. As soon as the railway is completed and the train starts working, I think it's going to reduce the traffic on the Lagos Express and then it will be very much easier for people to get to their offices and homes. It's a good development and I need to commend the Lagos State government for taking that initiative. The railway project is okay. They try it is do more to help us because it's going to reduce the traffic sitting down two, three hours on a spot. 
It is gratifying to note that the Babaji Desamu new administration's deliberate commitment of the administration to engender intermodal transportation system in line with the team's agenda is beginning to take shape as there are noticeable increasing demands for different means of transportation, especially trains for commuting public. It is expected that the initiatives of the government towards reforming the transport sector will enhance the performance of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, and other stakeholders to achieve the smart city dream of the state government. And that is it on a special report on Team's agenda this week, which focused on the activities of the Lagos Metropolitan Area Transport Authority, Lamata, in line with the Team's agenda of Governor Babajide Sawoju. For feedback, you can follow us on all our social media platforms, Twitter at Lagos Traffic 961, Instagram Lagos Traffic, Facebook Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM, on YouTube, subscribe to our channel Traffic Radio 961. Also, you can now download our app Lagos Traffic Radio 96.1 FM from Play Store for more updates. This